let's just go over the three challenging riffs that we looked at today. That first one, because of that triplet that's thrown in there with the, I find it easiest to begin this riff starting on an upbeat, and like dividing it by eighth notes, except for the triplet, you gotta divide that beat into three parts. So it'd be something like, it's like you're like listening to your metronome, you're gonna come in like in between, so you have your down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, one, two, three, down, up. Let's try that one again. Because when you get a space that even three, by the time you get back to that note, landing on a downbeat, so that might be something to work on right there as well, just one, two, three, boom, one, two, three, boom, Let's see, if I was doing it that fast, how would that sound, something like that, okay, uh, the next one, the bends, the, got the, My recommendation on t counting that or tapping that to a metronome, just treat it with eighth notes for the fast part. So you have like your one and two, three. And the next part was the. Uh, you have 16th notes and 32nd notes so I would treat the 16th notes like 8th notes 32nd notes like 16th notes so basically half it so it would be so like a 1 and 2 e and a 3 and 4 talked about vibrato, I do the, you can call it the cello vibrato on the high E. You can also do a, a push up motion, like you push up and you come back down like this. Depending on what I do determines if I do that one or that one. But on those five strings, the E, A, D, G, and B, I tend to do that just a series of small pull downs or pulling down on the string is really small bends sometimes I use my whole arm to do it depends on what I'm doing I tend to have the most control with my index finger uh, the other thing you had those movable shapes all the major chords are bar chords the minor chords are bar chords those three diminished are not bar chords because you're not barring anything but it's going to lead into an idea I have to help you learn this theory stuff better. So the major chords, you got that major chord, and then you have this one, and then you have this one. So this way you have a root note starting on the E, A, and D strings. And then the same idea with the minor. Whoops. There we go. Finished. So I'll say how I'm building this finger wise. So I got starting with the first finger, third finger, fourth finger, middle. So first, third, fourth, middle. First, third, fourth, middle. And the other one, I'm going first, second, fourth, ring. First, second, fourth, ring. And then I use the same fingers for the last one. I'm 
most likely we're not going to be doing too much with this one. It's still good to know the shape. So first, second, fourth, and uh, third finger. So just memorize the shapes. Go back and relearn your chord formulas. Major equals one, three, five. Minor equals one, flat three, five. Diminished, one, flat three, flat five. And the one that does not occur in the major scale, augmented, which is that. And that is one, three, sharp five. So if you have any questions, let me know. I will see you again next week.